Dear friends, a good morning and happy Easter. We will be celebrating this Mass from World to International Independence Center. And Mass will be celebrated by Father Lemoore. Father Lemoore is one of our chaplains here at World to We would like to wish all of you and your families a very blessed Easter. We pray that our Lord may clear the bloom of darkness and grief that surrounds our families at this time and our world at this time. We pray that wherever you are, you may feel the peace and mercy of the mighty God, and like Christ, you may experience the power of his resurrection today. From us to all of you, we wish you a very blessed Easter. Our entrance theme will be Easter glory fills the sky. He <clears throat> stop Hallelujah. To him be glory and power for all ages of eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today, my dear people of God, as I greet you in the name of the risen Lord with the Hallelujah song, I want to welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration, which we are celebrating from the World to Read National Military Medical Center here in Bethesda, Maryland, United States of America. I am glad to be connected with all of you, my dear people of God, particularly with me in this Mass. I have Father Ta, Brodo, David, and Chaplain Holmes in attendance, representing our sick people on the sick bed who are with us here at the medical center and of course welcoming you from wherever you are viewing from around the globe today we my people all of you my people are welcome to this celebration and a few days ago i alerted you of the, this celebration and you sent in your request those requests are known to god we are read by me, and for those intentions, I say this man. My dear people of God, God cannot be confined to a space. Even as we have assembled with us here and you wherever you are, we are here in oneness, 
of faith in oneness of purpose. Let us therefore call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died and descended to Hades. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you rose to life to give us new life in Christ. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. And bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together we recite the hymn of glory. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest, on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, our heavenly King, O God, our mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God. Who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by the Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Brother David, would you like to read the first reading? This is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. This is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad. This, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. This, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. 
The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Our next reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended, in what combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, O Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ our Paschal Lamb has been crucified. Let us then feast with the joy of the Lord. Alleluia. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have placed him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the, the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. He saw and he believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> The Lord has risen, as he said, let us rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Father, in your name I come and I stand here. Put words in my mouth to be able to minister to your people 
who firstly are here on the seat there and secondly are around the globe watching me right now. I am not worthy to stand behind this lectern, to be on the altar. I am not worthy, O oh Lord, to represent you. But unworthy as I am, you have chosen me to make me worthy. May the administration, the words of my mouth, take flesh in the lives and the hearts of people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear people of God, we celebrate this Easter Sunday. And the first thing I want to tell you is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a fact. It's not a fiction. It's not an element of theology or a spirituality. We hope to see. This is an event that took place and if we believe in it, will take place for you and for me. The resurrection of Christ happened and continues to happen and will happen in our lives. So, the theme I'm preaching on today is do not let anybody steal your job. Do not let anybody steal your job. And I'm taking it from the events and the accounts that happen in our gospel reading. We see in our gospel reading, and a mention is made of three people. First, we hear of Simon Peter. Then we hear of Mary Magdalene. And then the other disciple, whose name was not given. A lot of people have said he was John the Evangelist, or which other John? Whatever John it was, right now, I don't care. It is a nameless disciple. And the purpose why he is nameless, we will see momentarily. So three people are named. Mary of Magdala, Simon Peter, and the other disciple. Now, it was done very, very early in the morning. And these people came, three of them, all three. But first, Mary of Magdala. Let me introduce you to this woman. You will love her, Mary of Magdala. Often she is confused with the other Marys. A common name. Mary was a very common name in her era, in her place, in her epoch. So almost everybody was Mary. If I ask you now, who was Mary Magdalene? Perhaps your mind will start running and perhaps let it run. Because often she is being confused with the other Mary in John chapter 12. When Jesus Christ came to Bethany and was in that house eating, and then Mary came, she came and then was weeping at his feet and drying that feet with her hair. A lot of people have confused Mary Magdalene to be that Mary. But no, no. Mary Magdalene was introduced to us first by St. Luke in Luke chapter 8. She was a Mary who had seven demons. And from seven demons, tormented her, changed her life. She was almost always seen as mad because the demon, demons, seven of them, shaking her upside down, were always directing and misdirecting her life. Jesus Christ came and freed her from those demons. From that moment onwards, she devoted her life and service to Jesus Christ and followed Jesus Christ. And did not only follow Jesus Christ, but also provided for his needs. He was with Jesus all throughout. Now, something happened. The event of the passion death of Jesus Christ. It has happened and it happened at a time when Mary was not able to pay Jesus Christ the honor salute. Nobody was able, they all had run away. It was Joseph of Arimathea hurriedly who took the body of Jesus Christ, wrapped it, and buried it in a new tomb. Now, this body was there. Mary said, I was not able to do him the homage. Let me go do him the homage. Early in the morning at dawn, she divided all odds. She did not care if it was old. She did not care if it was dark. She did not care if God was here. She did not care about anything. What was her mind in her mind? She was resolute. I must go and pay my last respect. So she went. When she went, she saw that her disappointment was even deepened. It was not only that 
Yes, she has lost the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but the body was not there. The body was not there. So what did she do? The body was not going to be found. In her disappointment, she started crying. She started weeping. She started mourning. She was in pain. She was in pain. She did not see the body of Jesus Christ. Let me pause here a little and think and invite you to think. Think about the many people who die, who disappear. The many women and girls who are trafficked. Their loved ones never came to see their bodies. At this moment, Mary is not seeing Jesus. The sadness in her is deepened. Think about the many people who died of hunger in the Sahara Desert. Their bodies not seen, eaten by other wild animals, caught shot, raped from their loved ones. Think about the many people who in search of greener pastures, attempt the dangerous crossing from North Africa to Italy. They get drowned in the sea. Their bodies eaten by sharks, whales, and other sea creatures. They never get to be seen. They disappear. Think about the many people who have died through this coronavirus. The loved ones we are not there to hold them by their hands, to grieve with them, to mourn with them. Their graves will never be seen. Think about it and understand what Mary at this point was facing. The Lord Jesus Christ is not only dead, but his body is nowhere to be found. Think about what she was going through. Her pain. Her emotional stress, her distress, the problems that came. No fear where, nothing at all. Think about all of that. In the face of this disappearance of the body of Jesus Christ, she was seemingly powerless. What was she to do? Cry? Yes, she did. But what else? She did not sit there to say, I will do nothing. She ran and reported. At least she did something. She took back her power to say, I must report this. To who? To the other two whose names are mentioned. Simon Peter and the other disciple. So these two ran. The other disciple ran faster. Got to the tomb. He bent down and did not go in. Simon Peter came. He ran behind. He came and entered into the tomb. When he entered, he saw the arrangement. How the clothes, burial clothes, were laying down in different places. He saw those things. Then the other disciples came. When he came, he saw and he believed. While Simon Peter was doubting, he saw and he believed. What did he see? What brought him to faith? And the question to you is, what do you have to see in order to believe? Why was it possible for him to believe by what he saw? And it was not easy for Peter to bring himself to that faith immediately. They left. That they left, and that concluded the portion which we read today. But I want to continue a little. This woman, Mary of Magdala, Mary Magdalene, continued there. She was there weeping, praying, searching, looking, doing the investigative work, coming the area. Is somebody here? Did somebody steal him? Did somebody take him away? All of a sudden, an angel appeared, and she did not know it was an angel. 
And he said, If you have taken my Lord away, show me where you have placed him, I will go and pay him homage. I will take him. I beg you, give me back my Jesus. In that exchange of words that happened be between them, she was downcast. She could not even look forward. As she was crying in her pain, that voice spoke the name Mary. She recognized that voice immediately. She lifted her head and said, Rabboni, and wanted to go and grip him. He said, do not cling on to me now. For I have not yet gone to my father. But go tell my brethren. So Mary ran to meet the other two. See, and told them he is alive and has appeared to me. When she got there, she was saying, he's alive, amen, he's alive. Jesus is alive forever, he's alive, amen. She sang that song to them. She was telling them, I have seen him. Yes, he is alive. So that brings me to the point that yes, he is alive, he's been seen, he's been touched. They have fed, he has fed them, they have fed him. What is the message? What's the lesson we draw from all of this? The lesson is, as I said, do not let any man, do not let any woman, do not let anything steal your joy away from you. You may have made your plans at the beginning of the year 20. 20. Your plan did not include coronavirus. Your plan did not include sickness. Your plan did not include joblessness. Your plan did not include pain and disappointment. Your plan did not include any of this. Now, these things have come, especially this virus, wanting to cut your joy short. And I say to you, do not let it steal your joy. Why? Because God is busy transforming the world. God is busy transforming the face of the earth. You remember when he transformed the face of the earth after the flood during the days of Noah? Yes, it was a new earth. You remember how he was busy transforming after the pestilence when everybody came to Egypt in search of food? Seven years, no rain, no food, nothing. People were dying of hunger. People were dying of thirst. He was busy transforming the face of the earth. Remember how he transformed the world and the people during their sojourn in the desert. When they complained, they grumbled. He brought fiery serpents to bite them. And anybody who complained was beaten and died. He was busy transforming the face of the earth. Today he has sent us this virus. Some of us may live to see the new heavens and the new earth. Others will not. But whatever happens, even if we do not see the new transformation, our joy is that because of the risen Christ, we will be happy with him in the next, in heaven. Because of Jesus Christ, because of this day, we will not be lost. Our death will not be in vain. But by his power and by our prayer and by the miracle performed here on this Eucharist, most of us will see the new earth which God is busy making. So do not let this situation steal your joy away from you. Just as that Mary thought that Jesus Christ had joy was stolen, so you think your joy is stolen. You have Jesus Christ. Do not let anybody steal that joy. Lesson number one. Lesson number two. You may be looking for Jesus, but you cannot find him. You have searched everywhere. You have gone to your spiritual director. You have gone to your job. You have gone to your authorities. You have gone. Everyone you have turned to have failed you. Perhaps they have even preyed on you. You have become a victim. You have become, because of your vulnerability, they have taken advantage of you. Hey, I have a message for you today. The good news is, do not let that take your joy away from you. God told us, put no trust in what I meant. Yes, do not let your joy be stolen from you. You may be behind a storm. Jesus was buried behind that stone. And the stone was to keep that body away. They came, rolled the stone. If you find yourself that you are stuck in that place, 
in that bed, a bed of pain. Whatever you have done, you are not recovering. Whatever medicine is not working, you think it's not working. You are stuck behind there. If you think you are being bewitched, if you think things are working against you, your enemies are risen against you. They are putting you behind that stone, holding you captive. Do not let that steal your joy. Why? When Jesus Christ in John chapter 11 came, Lazarus was dead. He was already dead for four days, meaning the spirit had left. He told them, roll back the stone. They rolled back the stone and he called Lazarus come out and Lazarus came out. It is never late for God. God does not arrive late. So he assures us in Ezekiel chapter 37, he says, I will breathe into dead bones and I will tell the dead bones, arise and then they will rise. You may be stuck in that place you think everything is over. The bones are dead. No flesh, nothing on them. When the Lord is ready because of the resurrection of Christ, when the Lord comes because of this day, he will say, dead bones, arrive. Arrive. So, do not let your circumstances, your situation, steal your job. And finally, my dear people of God, we are called to be Easter people. And the biggest challenge in that is that we are called to always make the difference. We live by faith. We are called to love those who hate us. Difficult. But yet we cannot wait for the resurrection. Benefit from the resurrection if we do not want to do the work. And part of the work is to love as I have loved you. We are Easter people. We are to be of service to our brothers and sisters, especially those in need. That is a call. If we are to benefit from the resurrection, we are to love our enemies. If we are to benefit from the resurrection, if we are to benefit from the resurrection, we are to pray as if everything depended on God, but yet walk as if everything depended on us. If we are to benefit from the resurrection, we are to live life, Christians in action, doing things for our Savior, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the power of the resurrection imprint these words in our heart so that now and forevermore we will be loved with him here on earth and in the next in heaven. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear people of God, I will invite you to please stand. And together we will renew our baptismal resolutions which we once made when we accepted Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of their father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Please, Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our Holy Father, the Pope, 
We pray for our bishops. Pray for our priests. Pray for our deacons. Pray for our religious brothers and sisters around the world. Pray for leaders of other world religions. Pray for ministers of other denominations. Pray and ask that God may help us to come together as a praying and believing community to continue to fight spiritually for our people, that our prayers may ascend to God like incense, and that from heaven God may bless the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sickened by this virus. Pray especially for those in intensive care. Pray and ask that God may provide fresh imagination, that God may provide fresh guidance, that God may be with our doctors and our nurses and all medical personnel who are working tirelessly for the relief and for the healing of our sick, that their care and ministry may have an impact for their healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our governments around the world. Pray that our leaders may recognize this as a very unique moment for world unity, where we come together as a people and seek a common cause and a common answer and response to this virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers. Pray especially for those who have lost from this virus. Pray for their families that are grieving their loved ones. Pray for someone whose life is changed forever as a result. Pray for those who have lost their jobs. Pray for those who are struggling to pay the next bill. Pray for those who are struggling to even feed their families. That God may inspire the care and love of their neighbors to come to their relief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray for those who may not be able to celebrate Easter. Those who are celebrating from their homes. Those who find this moment very boring, depressing and are just barely hanging on, that they may feel the power of Christ's resurrection in their lives and hearts to set up something new again. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. We pray for you who are watching from your sick bed, that you may feel the power and presence of Christ right before you, right in your heart, right in your life, that you may feel the healing, and the healing, the healing graces and balm of the Holy Spirit Soothing that pain and breathing life into those lungs. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Most merciful God, we thank you for the gift of the resurrection as an Easter people. May the power of the Holy Spirit inspire our lives every day. And may we act, may we speak, and may we live as a testament of the resurrected people. These are the favors we have asked, and everything else you know we need, we present to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and the wine, we offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands. May they become for us, O Lord, the bread of life and our spiritual bread. Blessed be God forever, and of God, we ask you to be pleased with us and accept the gifts we offer you with humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquities.
dear people of God, that your sacrifice of mine may be pleasing to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Exalt and put fast and gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously renewed, reborn, and kept nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your heart, we lift them up to the Lord, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, for Lord, you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our dead, and by rest, rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic coast sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, give the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you have willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious mothers, with all the saints and on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. With this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim children of your servant, Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, priests, religious, the laity, and all the clergy, and the entire people whom you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family and the families gathered around the world who are participating in this ministry, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O oh, merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, especially those who die alone. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of all the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen. at the Savior's command. And formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer that peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sin of the world. My dear people of God, this is Jesus Christ risen from the dead, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is Christ, Je Jesus Christ is risen today.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfading love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear people of God, I'd like to appreciate your presence at this Eucharistic celebration. We are gathered to represent the people around the world. He said in his word, he is always with us until the end of time. It is true today, it is true tomorrow, and it will be true forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A particular thank you to those who are watching from around the globe, wherever you are. God is not confined and limited to a space. So as you participated in this Mass, wherever you are, the blessings that Chaplain Holmes, Brother David, Father Ta and I will receive is the same blessing that you receive. Amen? Amen. So peace be with you and glad you will come. And uh, to our sick brothers here at War 3, the Lord is kind and full of compassion. He is slow to anger. And the Lord does not punish us with illness. Instead, He wants to heal us. If it is His power through this Eucharistic celebration, may you be healed and restored to health. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for participating. If you rise, I will give you the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son Endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion are drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come to Christ, help and exalt him in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in the eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Deo gratia. Oh, 